this is well my experience is probably you heard this morning on that live it's it's not very nice my experience i come across her and my daughter's got free drainage on like she has and um she told me that there were no limit that you could lose out of a drainage bag from your stomach which there is a limit because that's where you lose all your electrolytes and all your potassium and everything from so you there's, there's a limit it's just like vomiting really there's a limit for that in the like you get to a point where you get it gets dangerous when you do so much um and then um she told me i was lying about that and then i said that carly couldn't swallow because she can't and um and she said she couldn't she said she had an unsafe swallow and then two seconds later she was eating jelly beans and drinking monster so then i said well i thought you couldn't swallow and then she blocked me and then she started um messaging and posting on my videos and talking on live saying that um i've got munchausen's by proxy and i make my child ill mm -hmm. now, um carly's got um she's got two feeding tubes carly like kirsten but carly's are in her abdomen she's got two surgical ones one's for drainage and one's for feeding in a jejunostomy but um she used to have an ng did carly which you can place yourself at home but an ng you can't mm. but with ngs you are meant to aspirate back get put a syringe to, to attach a syringe to the bottom of the tube pull back your stomach content and test that it's the right ph acid um no it's, it's not it's not the same pk frankie it's definitely not me no 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 <laughs> definitely not um you've got you've got to make sure that it's in the right place and not that it's in your lungs or anything like that because they can easily move can ngs and drainage stuff like that so you've got to test that it's in the right place which she never does um nj tubes they're not easy to get changed because they're either done in endos endoscopically or um radiology um and then like she'll get it changed within an hour or two of it coming out again which it's impossible curly's gone weeks without any access for feed because her tube has flipped back into her stomach so then we can't feed her um so then that doesn't the tubes don't work as quick as she's saying about getting them changed she doesn't have a fast pass to get it changed because she's reliant on it so everyone else with an nj is reliant on them or a peg j whichever way you want to call it everyone that's got them are reliant on them for what they need it for um so but they never get treated fast like carly's four carly's had tubes since she was about three months old and she's never ever had a tube change there and then when it's broke it's always been a couple of days to two weeks before we can get a new one in her it's never been straight away eh? um so then obviously because she's like that she's in hospital because she can't be at all with no access obviously um because she's got hyperglycemia as well as carly and like with kirsten's hypos if she's having a hypo um she'll she'll drop she'll face plant the table do whatever she wants to do and then as soon as her dad puts the key in the door and turns the door she sits up now from from my point when carly's been in a high point she's been unconscious no matter who's gone near her she's not woke up she's never woke up when anyone's gone near her and even when we've got her back round and her blood sugars are back to normal she still doesn't wake up straight away yeah it's when you have when you have a sorry for interjecting um, when you have a low blood sugar it's when you're out cold with a blood sugar like that it's it's not as easy as like a slightest noise to wake up um it's very very dangerous as well and it takes you a long time to recover from it so the fact that she can hear a key in the door tells me that it's not genuine as well um i know th that you're not the only person who's had a ba the bad experience with um chronically kk or whatever her name is because I, I heard that she goes through different like different names as well she does um, she'll get bored of one person and then got move on to somebody else mm -hmm. it's like um she's commented on videos of carly um with carly's seizures saying that um carly's seizures are 
fake and I've basically I don't know how please tell me how but I've trained a four year old to have seizures ridiculous isn't it yeah can I just, um, can I just correct the comments for a normal person um blood sugars is normal between four and seven if you are a diabetic anything under five is a low blood sugar for a diabetic but for normal people like for normal like you are, are diabetic and it's between four and seven um she does not sound like a nice no she's not she's not she's not a nice person at all from the sounds of it um kiki is the name um chronically chronic kiki is the handle of the name of the person now forgive me i've forgotten her actual name is it kirsten it's <coughs> kirsten yeah that kirsten so her actual name is Kirsten. So that went to seizures as well. <laughs> oh, I don't even know where to start with these seizures. <laughs> because the sounds that she makes when she's having seizures. Now, I'm not saying people don't make sounds. Um, that, that's not what I'm saying. But she says that her airway is compromised in seizures. And she makes really, really loud sounds. So from my experience, if your airway is compromised during a seizure, you, you don't make sounds. Uh, no, <clears throat> I've got a video, and, and I'm just going to say it bluntly. Yeah, I've got. <laughs> there's a video. Of, she sounds like a chicken being done up the bum, yeah. and that's the nicest way you're putting it. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's the nicest way you're putting it. Um, and I've never seen or heard Carly make sounds like that because if Carly were to make sounds like. Kirsten does with a siege. I'd have to walk out the room because it's they're not even believable sounds. And the fact me and my partner were watching her when we first came across her once, and at first we were pretty convinced that she was having a seizure and it were real. Yeah. She picked her phone up and moved it so she were in camera shot because her phone fell. She picked her phone up halfway through for oh I want I need to move my phone. They can't see me. Oh. Do you know who that reminds me of? That reminds me of Ems. Yeah. A little bit. See, I, don't, I haven't watched her for ages because she's another one that winds me up. Oh. But yeah, she moves the phone and halfway through a yeah. seizure, she'll read comments. You see her looking directly at the phone. Mm -hmm. And no matter what kind of seizure, she has, one minute she has epileptic seizures and then the non-epileptic, then she has both. But then there's no post to stage with her. She comes straight to. Now, Carly's never come straight to from a seizure. She's always had the post to stage or gone straight to sleep after because but you, when you've the seizure, they tell you you're out, don't they? She yeah. has no post to stage, nothing like that. She had CPR um, at home, refused to go to hospital, and but was back on live within an hour. You won't be able to do that if you had an actual seizure. No. Not like Amy's just said in the comments, then she wakes up fine as soon as someone says they've called an ambulance. And then she tells everyone to stop calling ambulances for hoax calls. But how are the hoax calls when people are seeing her do these things on the internet and they're concerned that yes. there's this young girl led there having a seizure or this young girl passed out? People are going to be concerned and they're going to raise the concerns and they're going to ring ambulances when they're like that. Yeah. Oh, and, and yeah, the subcut line is a port. She's, she's meant to have a central line. <laughs> and um, my little girl's had central lines, so I called her out on it because it were in a chest and you could tell it weren't a central line. It looked nothing like a central line. And when I called her out on the central, she moved it and now it's in a groin so no one can see it. Um. But her central lines aren't really the, the, the she puts them in herself. She puts cannulas in her foam. Wow. Like, in her foam. Oh, um, she had a central line, it was here. Yeah. Yeah. And then that was until she shot the oh, what are they called? The fish on her arm. It was like a massive yeah. thing thing. She had that until she had the, the vein done. Um, yeah. 
But uh, she lies about the central lines. And I do say lies because it is lies. There's proof. There was once she moved once and she had this central line in, in a chest. At this <laughs> point, she moved and she didn't realise she'd moved and the camera was on her. The part of the central line that were meant to be attached to something was just sticking out the bottom of a T-shirt. It was just an extension off a cannula that was sellotaped to her and you could see it. <laughs> I've got, Honestly. you could see the cannula sellotape to the a, a skin popping out the bottom of a t-shirt. Why? Why would she do that? Like like um, like Ben's just said, why would you even put yourself through that if you don't need to? Um, there's, I don't know, we all know about Munchausen's by proc, like, like Munchausen's, yes. whatever it is. Um, often people do that when they like the attention they get when they're not well. So whatever's put her in the hospital, originally before all this started she must have liked that attention now i found something out today and i don't know how true it is but apparently the pair the family had lost another sibling yeah that's true um well okay then um so this could be a massive reaction to her losing that family member now it's not an excuse by any means the way she's behaved and the way she's treated people is absolutely disgusting the fact that i know for a fact that there is a certain team that are safeguarding children from her lives there's a certain hunting team that are doing that yeah and children do need to be saved from them lives they can't yeah. be seeing the things that she's doing and especially for like vulnerable adults as well because she has come for so many vulnerable adults and it's awful because they feel like because of what they see if, if they don't have the background of the knowledge on the medical stuff that she's portraying she's got um they're gonna believe they're gonna and she is very easy to believe for some people um if i hadn't had carly and i didn't know about because all the issues that Kylie's got, I probably would have believed her. That, see, to be fair, before I found out that she'd done this, you'd look at her and you'd think, oh, she's actually genuine. Yeah. Feel. Yeah. If but, I didn't have Kylie and I come across her, I would have thought the exact same thing. But because I, cause she claims that she has intestinal dysmotility as well, which Kylie's got that. Mm -hmm. Um and um kirsten sat there a few times and said that she's had an accident like pooped herself on live um she's told people openly said it it's out there she said that um but she said that she was diagnosed as a baby and she's progressively getting worse and blah 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 now kirsten's 25 carly's four and i know everyone's like gi system with the intestinal dysmotility that's all at different rates and there's all different ways that it's affected but she says that um, hers is really, really bad. She can't tolerate feeds and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But, like, she pooped on live. <laughs> um, but Carly can't, Carly can't go on her own. She's never been able to. Yeah. And she's four. And it's like, she says she can't tolerate a feed, but when you put, when she's flushing her meds down her supposed NJ tube, um, she pushes them meds really, really quick. Now, yeah. to go into a judge, it has to be slow. Um, quite slow into a judge. Carly's after going slow. Um, and the volume she flushes as well to say she can't tolerate feeds. She does flush quite a high volume of medications down her feeding tube. Yeah. Deep. I don't know a lot about um about NG um the tube situation to be fair well the um, drainage one that's like that's classed as an ng so that goes into your stomach and then the one that she says is an ng is um it goes into your small intestine so it completely bypasses your stomach right which okay is, um, what carly's got one like that as well that completely back well carly's is surgical so it's directly into her bowel yeah well small intestine whichever one you want to call it but um one of one of kirsten's is meant to go there but there's plenty of proof that when she's flushing meds down the nj that's meant to be in her intestines no. if you watch the drainage tube 
And it's more prominent when she flushes her blue meds. You mm -hmm. watch the drainage tube when she flushes the blue meds. You watch it come straight back out. That, doesn't, that, that wouldn't be right though if it comes straight back out of it. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be right and it shouldn't do that. Because like if Carly, when Carly um, tubes used to flip back into her stomach, if that were the case and some of it were coming out of her drainage that I'd put into her jet, she'd be straight in hospital because the tube would come out of place. Uh, but you, you see it many, many times. What, what she puts down one tube comes straight out the other. And it's pretty obvious and she's got to a point now because it's she's it's been caught out and seen. Um she hides a drainage tube now off camera when she's flushing any medication. She'll sit back and try and hide it so people can't see. So the tubes are actually in her body, yeah, but they're not where she's saying they are and they're not for what she's saying they're for. I think it's as you're watching it as well, as like more information comes through, it's kind of becoming more obvious to more people that she is pretending. So what what do you think is going to be the end point of this? Like, What's going to be the point where this is going to stop, where she realises what she's doing is wrong and she actually realises that she actually needs help, mental health help? I don't think there's going to be an end point, to be honest, because she sits there and she does say that she doesn't have any mental health conditions. Um, she will say she doesn't have any, or she's had them in the past and they've been took away from her. I don't think it's going to end. Personally, I don't. I'd love for it to. Love for it to, but I don't think anyone's going to be able to stop her because it's the attention that she gets and, like, just off everyone on the internet like oh feel sorry for me kind of thing that like, she loves that thing she loves the attention that she gets off all the mods and the people that are in her life that do believe that she's sick now there's people out there saying that they don't think kirsten knows what she's doing and she don't understand what she's doing but from my point i 100 percent think well not 100 percent. i can't say that can i but I think she knows exactly what she's doing because yeah. someone was saying it on a live before and they got a bit shitty with me, not going to lie, um, <laughs> that uh, with a mental health condition she can't remember what she's saying. Now everything she said to me were back in February, mm -hmm. oh, how can she still remember it now if that was the case? Mm. Baby. She wouldn't be able to remember it, would she? If it was a mental health condition that made her say the things she said about my daughter, um, she won't be able to remember what she said now. No. no. Because she I've never, I've, I've never known. The mental health conditions that I've got make your memory really, really bad. I can't remember what happened last week. Yeah. So, I don't want to say that she would remember like she would remember or she wouldn't remember but to the facts i've never known a mental health illness or any illness that would make someone attack a children a child yeah and <laughs> this is what i was saying before like mental illness or not it, it's you you know right from wrong most of the time I'm not saying everyone does because i know there's some mental illnesses that you can't control things and I'm, I'm not saying that, and, and I get that, but she knows what she's doing because the second she's called out or you mention something, her story changes to match what that person's called her out. And they say, well, no, you're saying this and that's wrong. So then they'll, she'll change her story to what that person said to make herself look more believable. It's like when I said with the central line, she moved it from her chest so no one could see it because she knew it was wrong. I literally don't know. Like, like you said, I don't. You said that like, you don't think it's gonna be an end point. Now, in my head, there has to be an end point. Um, at some point, whether it's now, whether it's a couple of months down the line, whether it's years down the line, um, it's quite clear. I know she sat there and said she's not got mental health issues, but she quite clearly has. Um, if she's doing this on a parent basis, then 
she needs intervention and she needs to be sectioned. She is, the, like, what she is doing is fraudulent. It is fraudulent. And I feel, I feel for, for Kirsty, I feel for every single person that is affected by this individual. I also feel for the moderators as well, because the moderators are extremely vulnerable from what I've heard as well from other people talking about it. Um, and I think I think Kirsten herself. Hi, yeah, Natalia. I hope you're okay. Um, I think Natalia herself. Not Natalia. Oh my gosh. I think Kirsten herself is vulnerable as well. Um, but she's not vulnerable in the states where she she's being preyed on. She's vulnerable in a sense where she's got a, a sense of grandeur and delusion where she's in this, she's in her head and she actually thinks that she's got these issues. She need, exactly like um, Usha said that, Cece's just said, she needs safeguarding from herself. Um, and it's very worrying that there's children that watch her. Very worrying. Is there anybody else who wants to come in the box? See, I don't think, you know when you've just said like you think like, she thinks she's got these illnesses herself. Mm -hmm. I think she knows she hasn't. She knows she hasn't. <laughs> yeah, because her stories change all the time. <laughs> if you were convinced that you had an illness, surely your stories would stay the same. Your stories wouldn't change as much as her stories do. That's an actual fair point. That is an actual fair point. Well, well, about that care thing, um, Margot. She said, I'm pretty sure I watched a video before where she said she's not got carers. I'm pretty sure on that video we were watching before, I'm pretty sure she sat there and said she's not got carers. We're talking about chronic Kiki. Um, Natalia, we're talking about chronic Kiki. Um, is there anybody else in the chat that wants to come up? Because I know... Um, there was a gentleman who wanted to come up and talk about chronic, chronic Kiki. Oh, there's somebody in the box, let's see. Oh, who's this? Oh. Oh, what's going on? Hiya, Bentley, are you okay? Hello, darling. Um, first Hi. of all, Carly, I just want to say my, my heart really goes out to you um you know with uh, everything that's happening and the struggles that you're dealing with now and obviously what you're going to have for the rest of your life and you know my really like feel for you and you are a wonderful mother thank you it has been difficult rod very difficult with her but she's she's the happiest kid as well though yeah she is so happy like to look at her you won't think anything honestly she's the happiest bravest little girl she is. She's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So with regards to this um, Kiki person, you know, it could be that uh, when she's on live, that, you know, like you say, it's all an act. And when she comes off of live, she could be perfectly normal. And this is why the medical team won't section her because no one's seeing her needing any sectioning or any medical help you know when that when that camera gets switched on you can play any part that you want to play and what's the biggest thing for some for people when people are ill or their children are ill it mm -hmm. touches at everybody's hearts because it does get you know as, as women um and and mothers and it, and it and it really pulls at our heartstrings and so when we see someone ill the first thing we do is we want to rush and help that person and because it's a, a TikTok, the only way we can help is by giving gifts and money yeah and so a lot of people are going to prey on this that aren't ill i think it's sick really to be honest you've got to be like really twisted to yeah. to be able to to hoodwink people and to be able to manipulate people um do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do believe that she has got something in her that's either an attention seeker or is just a very cruel, sick young lady. Yeah, yes. and that's it with her as well. Say so if someone comes on alive, um, 
she'll say that um, if someone say, comes on a live, sorry, I was reading the comment and I got lost, and say they've got an illness and saying this one well, say if it's one of the same illnesses as kirsten's got and something doesn't portray what kirsten's saying she blocks them and tells everyone they're faking yeah. i'm not the only person that she has done this to um no i don't know if she's gone around commenting on other people's videos like she did with mine but again the video she commented of mine was only the videos like the epilepsy video the um Gastro dismotility, the intestinal dismotility one, the high poor ones. Um, it were videos like that of the illness that she, she, she portrayed, she had that she commented on of mine saying Munchausen's by proxy. And then she sent me some absolute vile messages on private messages saying about my, um, I didn't deserve her um, and all this and that, and that social services were coming to take her. There's a video on my page as well where her and a mod were saying that um, this is disgusting now what I'm about to say. It's absolutely disgusting. And this was the last drone for me when this was said. That um, she should have been swallowed because I made bad decisions. What? Yeah. I mean, come on, you've got to be, it, that takes a lot for that to come out of someone's mouth, doesn't it? To even think that, let alone say it. But in the video as well, Kirsten turns around and says, you've not just said that again, have you? So it was said more than once. But do you know what, right? When you've got a genuine illness, okay? I mean, as a person, if somebody's ill, you empathize with them. But if you've also got a genuine illness, surely you're even more compassionate to other people who've got illnesses. So why is she attacking you? She um, should be empathizing with you and wanting to almost, you know, become like a friend with you so you can talk about stuff. And why block people when they say they've got a problem? Yeah, and this is what I said. I said because she's portrayed that she's had the um, gastro issue since a baby. Now, Kylie's had her gastro issue since a baby, but for the first, like, 15 months, it was just past as reflux because she was a baby and all babies have reflux, apparently. But it was portrayed as that. But then, like, because if, if Kirsten had been as poorly as she was saying since a baby, she'd, like you say, she should understand how yeah. I'm feeling and sympathise with how Kylie's been because Kirsten said she were on TPN for quite a while in Great Ullman Street um, but again she's got no scars to prove these central lines now Kylie were on TPN for quite a while in Alder Hay um, yeah. and there's proof that Kylie was on TPN but again um, I lied about that yeah see, that, this, that this is what this, this I feel screams somebody who is not right in themselves mm -hmm. you know and and doesn't know how to interact and a scene that there are genuine people on here who are poorly who have poorly families and has almost come on and thought how do i get this attention and has gone down this route but but she's so unwell that she's attacking other people who want to support her or anybody else really who's almost like competition you're like comp in her head you're like competition to her because while you're on this app she's not getting the biggest attention yeah and i just want to say as well um Kirsty, you don't have to prove anything to anyone okay so and that's one thing with her though like she makes people do that because if people say that she's got they've got a certain illness she'll ask for proof but then she won't show proof herself. She, with the things that she was saying about me and how many people was believing her that was on her lives, yeah. that was believing that I'd made my child poorly. Um, I had to post medical letters to prove what I was saying, what she was saying was lies, and that I didn't make my child poorly. Um, because someone else has said that to like a parent that like yeah. that blows my mind. She's got a rare genetic disorder, as Carly. It's quite rare, so not many people have heard of her genetic condition. Mm -hmm. But again, like, how could you fake um, genetic conditions? You can't. There's, no, there's literally no faking it. Like, did I go to the lab and tamper with her blood whilst they were in there? I don't even know what lab they were in. <laughs> like that, they can't be tampered with. Like the seizures that Carly has, they can't. They can't be faked. The tubes. Like I got told that um, Carly, she had surgery in February. Did Carly? She, she got really, really poor. 
properly after it she couldn't breathe so she ended up with a bit of support with breathing on her and stuff like that and um she told everyone the pictures were photoshopped do you know, do you know what's really awful you're going sorry is it kirsty is it kirsty carly's yeah. mum yeah it is yeah you're you're going through such a lot now and in the future and you're so upbeat and happy and positive and you're having to deal with this kiki making you prove yourself and sending you vile messages this is horrendous when you're it's dealing with isn't it yeah I, just, I can't get my head around it i want to i want to be able to go live with it with, with this case and I'm just say to her look what are you what are you doing like why are you coming for a, like another mother well a mother not another mother, mother but a mother who has got a really ill and chronically ill child and mm -hmm. what what is going on something's got to give um especially and I can understand um why certain teams are getting involved and why they're making awareness for children because children do go in this life and she's telling children not to take the medication which is it's it's life it's important they need to take that medication because obviously they've been prescribed it for a reason mm -hmm. but i just don't understand how somebody who is poorly themselves would go after somebody else who is poorly and um and i don't understand how she how old is she she's 25 so she's i mean well you know she's young still but not young enough that you don't know the difference between right and wrong mm -hmm. yeah and this is what i said she knows exactly what she's doing she knows what she's doing is wrong because let's like, say if you call her out on anything at all you get blocked and then you get accused of faking yourself yeah that screams doesn't it fraudster absolutely yeah. like she's the only one that's allowed to be poor you're not allowed to be poorer than she is Mm. You're not allowed. Because it has to end in a fatality for her to stop. Um, unfortunately, with the advice that she's given out, which is completely incorrect, there's a massive danger where she could be giving this advice to somebody, a young child or a vulnerable adult, and they unfortunately that advice leads to that fatality, or. She, do, she does something to herself and doesn't think of the consequences and that's just as sad as well. I, obviously, I don't want to, I don't know about you guys, I don't want nothing bad to happen to her, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I just want her to stop and I want her to think of what she's doing. And the has, she got, um, has she got no family? She's got a mum and dad. She doesn't live in the house with them because she can't get in and out of the house. Um, mm -hmm. Mum and dad visit the house regularly, and um, Mom doesn't. Mom doesn't. I'm Mom not sure is. whether um, dad is in on it as well. Okay. Oh, yeah. From messages, from messages I've had from her dad, he is he's in on it. Yeah. I messaged him once with a list of things that she were doing about with the vulnerable people and taking money off vulnerable people and with all the stuff that she were doing. And his reply was, why do you care? It's not affecting you. Mm. The thing is, while she gets the views, while she gets the money rolling in, uh, this will carry on. And like I yes. say, if when she clicks off that computer, she's completely normal, uh, then this will just carry on. Yeah. I don't think there's going to be a stop to her. I really don't. I hope to God there is. But I really don't think it's it's going to come to an end. And the work that Sally's doing behind the scenes that no one knows about is absolutely amazing. And I saw a bit of that today. I saw a bit of um, what Sally's doing and I think it's absolutely amazing. I think yeah. more people need to get on board with this and do some more awareness themselves. Um, which is, this is, that's the main reason why I'm going to be Tomorrow, once I've done the Jesse King stuff, I'm going to be watching some of the Observer videos of what the, the Observer's doing. I personally know that I know somebody who's involved in the the um, safeguarding part of it as well um, with the teams. Okay, love yes. you too. See you at 7, Mickey.
um, one hundred percent needs doing because, like you say, there's children watching it, and if if these children are watching it, and or even like vulnerable teenagers or teenagers with mental health conditions as well, yeah, they're gonna think that it's okay what she's doing, and then they could potentially try and do that themselves, which is scary. It's very scary. Yeah, it's it's awful. It's it's awful. Awful. What? Um, I mean, you know, the way the times have changed, you know, we have internet, it's such a, a wonderful thing on one hand, but has caused a lot of people to do terrible things and scam like this and mm -hmm. cause harm to people on the other hand. Um, and you've got somebody like, you know, Carly's mum, is it Kirsty? Sorry, Kirsty. Mm -hmm. Um, who you know is is fighting a battle and now has to fight a battle against Kiki. Yeah, and she's not the only person who's come on TikTok before and lied about their health. Um, I don't know whether he is aware of someone called Bonnie. Mm, no. She um she used to come on and lied about having end stage kidney disease. That she was oh. waiting for a transplant. Um, that one of her teachers is going to give her a transplant. She had a date lined up for the transplant, um, which was like, what? I think it was like nine weeks in advance. Um, oh, yeah, her name's now Ruby Jane. Um, she She's come on and lied about it as well. Um, so it's not just Eva. Who's Paige? I, could, I don't know who that is. Yeah, Kirsten lied about being on end of life care as well. That's sick. She said she was on end of life, and there's videos of her saying it on one of her old profiles. Because someone asked her where she was on end of life care, she said I'm on end of life care. She said exactly what it means. I'm dying. That's why. And now that video's out there. She denies saying it. Yeah. She said I never said that. I said I was palliative care. I said, no, you did it because there's a difference between palliative and end of life. Probably gets medication from palliative just for symptom management. Doesn't mean she's dying. Yeah, it's not. It's it's all. She's like, yeah, she lied about end of life care as well, which is absolutely disgusting. Isn't and it again, awful though? Isn't it awful that you got all them people who are being scammed out of money, who are pouring their hearts out yeah. when they probably have loved ones themselves that are going through it. And, yeah, and the the devastating feeling of finding out that someone's lying, uh, and it just brings everything back, you know. Yeah, it breaks your heart, doesn't it? Like, yeah, I per I personally get um, emotional when people talk about end of life, um, because one of the reasons is because of my mum, and the other reason is that I had a short stint where I was doing work as a carer. And the amount of people I saw who were on end of life and they were on different stages of that cycle, it was horrible. Absolutely horrible. Why would anybody in their right mind lie about something like that? I don't get it. Um, hi, Molly, are you okay? But there is videos of um, yeah. on the U uh, Observer's YouTube about Kirsten with the end of life as well. Okay, I'll be watching that. I'll be watching that tomorrow. Hi, Molly, are you okay? Molly, we can't hear you. Oh, no. Let me out. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ellie, are you okay? <laughs> I uh, I didn't mean to request that. Oh, okay, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll be, you know. Sorry. Let me out. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, the right. people, who, people who make up illnesses and end of life stories, mm -hmm. they have no idea what it actually looks like Lovely. when you are watching a loved one and you have a few months left. It is the most harrowing experience and it never ever leaves your head. Um, and for people who make up stuff like that, it is so triggering to people because it brings up all those memories of what you've been through with a loved one. Yeah. It you does. can't describe the feeling of seeing someone on end of life and the emotions and love that you feel for that person and you wanna take it away from them. 
and it never leaves you. And for someone to lie about that, when you have put your heart and soul into helping that person because you know you've been through a similar thing, for them to find out that they're lying is so upsetting. Yeah. Okay, and Kirsten, like like Ruby Lots has said, Kirsten's seen that. So I do I do feel that trauma and grief have a part to play in the reasons why she's doing this. But again, that doesn't make it right. If she's if she's struggling with the loss of that family member, she needs to get help. She needs to get therapy and she needs to stop doing it because she's damaging herself and she's damaging other people as well. And honestly, honestly, I don't I don't understand. I will never understand why somebody does that. I won't. I think it stemmed from like you said, with her sister sadly passing away. Um, I think she's seen like the attention that her parents yeah. gave her sister, uh, yeah. which rightly so, her sister deserved that attention. One hundred percent, her sister deserved all that she did the attention that she needed at that time. Yeah. Uh, and I think because she's seen how much attention her sister was getting, she yeah. wanted that. See, she felt left out from that point, yeah. and now. Now, sadly, her sister's gone. When she was younger, um, she wants that attention that her sister had from her parents. Now, her mum doesn't bother. Her mum, her mum's quite brutal with her. But her dad, on the other hand, he's a different story. Yeah. Like, no one can really comment about her mum because you never see her mum there. You never hear her mum there when she's on live. Her mum never goes when there's phone calls made. Um, it's always her dad. I'm not sure how long um, ago since the sister passed. I'm not too sure. It was um, when they were kids, so they were, it was, she was quite young. So when she was when she was younger, then so quite a few years yeah. then. Yeah, um, yeah. It's when they were kids, when when they were younger. I think she was only. I don't. Well, let him say. I think Kirsten was about eleven when her sister passed. Yeah, that's got to have affected. Maybe because. I don't want to speculate here, but maybe after that loss, obviously parents um, are changed forever and yeah. it's understandable why. Maybe because of that, the parents weren't as focused on person as what they should have been, what they normally would be. Um, and so I've just had someone who's just come in and said she quite clear. Kay was sick, she was the dad at the age as well, so she was sick. So it's quite young, even the age of six, that's it. it's awful to lose a sibling at that age. It's and almost like she's felt abandonment by her parents. Yeah. And See, and I, can't imagine, way. I can't imagine how she felt losing a sibling, like, and, and it must be awful. Um, and it must be awful for parents and they probably all do suffer some kind of trauma from that they're going to yeah, yeah. again it doesn't give Kirsten the right to do what she is doing now yeah it doesn't yeah. It absolutely doesn't. Do you know what it, i think the more we're talking about it the more the story is sort of making sense isn't it yeah, yeah. um hi fire are you okay Hiya. I don't usually come up on um, boxes, <laughs> so I'm quite nervous with this. But okay. is it Kirsty? You said that she had um, a seizure online while she was live. Now, she's having seizures quite often while she's live. Um, I can give a kind of perspective from someone who's been diagnosed as a non-epileptic. Um, now, I asked my partner um, how I present when I have seizures and he says when I come out of a seizure, um, I have no clue where I am, who he is, uh, what time of day it is, what year it is. So um, if you are saying that she's just, you know, getting on like it's any other day, you know, it, it's, it seems a bit strange um, because, um, as my partner says, I'm not 
I'm not with it when I come out of my seizure whatsoever. Um, and my seizures tend to, um, they can last for quite a long time and they can roll from one seizure into another. Mm -hmm. And usually if you have seizures that last for quite a long time, you sometimes will be given a, like I was given, um, I believe, oh, I can't remember the name of it, um, because they stopped um, prescribing it because they had the problem giving it to be administered. My partner was to administer it to s try and stop the seizures from um, mm -hmm. rolling. Um, and we were told you were to call an ambulance if the seizures didn't stop. Um, so I kind of find it a bit strange that the minute an ambulance was um, mentioned, all of a sudden she would stop. And yeah, he, yeah. you know, he told me that um, my partner also told me that when I have seizures, when my eyes are open, my eyes are darting back and forth, darting back yes. and forth, darting back and forth. And my hands and that are locked into position. They're stiff. They're not. Oh, hang on. Let me adjust this or adjust yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but that that's coming from someone who is a non-epileptic um, who is diagnosed by a, uh, a neurologist um, as a non-epileptic. Um, I don't know if it's any different for someone who is diagnosed as an epileptic. Um, so yeah. I don't know much about epilepsy, so I can't say anything myself. But I have seen like absent seizures and stuff like that in the person when when they're having an absent seizure, they're not aware of what they're doing. They're not able to function properly. Um, it's like that with Carly, she's epileptic and Carly has, you name a seizure, Carly's probably had one. Um, yeah. She has quite a few, she has absent seizures, tonic chronic seizures, focal seizures, she has quite a lot of different type of seizures. Um, but Carly has never, like, I can't say from a person that has seizures because I've never had one, mm -hmm. but I can say from a person watching someone have seizures and Carly has never come to. Because um, most of Kirsten's seizures, she portrays like the tonic clonic seizures. Mm -hmm. um, like Carly has never come to and sat up and started reading a phone or looking no. at a TV or anything like that when she's come to. It's a slow process when you're coming to yeah. from, from an epileptic fit, you know, even from when you're doing first aid courses, which I've done loads of first aid courses because my job, I used to be a nursery nurse. So, um, doing that you know that it's not just a a sudden like you just come around and then that's it it's all, all sorted um but am i okay just to get wallace to talk just because yeah, yeah. Well, i'm going to drop down anyway because i've got okay. yeah, things no, to do but thank you for having me up all that's right no worries Harry. thank you hi there hi yeah you're okay yeah, I'm okay, thank you. I thought, obviously, I, I said to you this afternoon, obviously, I'll pop up onto the live and obviously give you a background story of what mm -hmm. I go through day-to-day -day life and my concerns with, obviously, this uh, individual. Yes. Uh, so I'm a father with three children mm -hmm. with a life-threatening condition. Yeah. Two of them are peg-fed. So if people don't know what that is, that is a tube that goes direct into the stomach through obviously through just above your belly button goes into the stomach. I've also got a child as well that is NG fed, which is, yeah. if, if people don't know, is a nasal gastric tube. Um, obviously you've got to make sure that tube is in the right place at any point that you come to use in that tube. Um, and obviously I've witnessed obviously this individual doing tube feeds without even testing pH, which you mm -hmm. must do, which if people don't know what pH is, it's just stomach contents. And you've got to make sure that it's below a certain marker. Mm -hmm. um, and this person isn't even testing herself. So if she puts anything down that tube and that is in the wrong place, she is actually going to drown herself. Can I just say, she doesn't test that tube because she's saying it's an NJ, so she's saying that it's in her intestines, not in her stomach. Now, tubes that you're in your intestines, you can't test them. Mm. But that's what yeah. she's saying her tube is, which we, we know it's not, so in no. hindsight, what he's saying, she should be testing it, 100%, she should be testing it. 1,000% is... is... 
One second, sorry. Safety no. concern. A high. Uh, that's a high safety concern. Yeah, very high. I agree, Wallace. Hmm. A hundred percent. It's it is um it is a welfare. It it's not just um, it's not just for the people who were who are vulnerable who were in here live. It's for her as well because obviously I personally and I think a lot of people wouldn't want anything bad to happen to her. This what she's doing to herself is damaging herself physically and mentally. And yeah. when he, when she's doing this and her viewers are watching this, they're going to be affected as well. Yeah. Well, that, that's it. It's because it's also sticking out false information for others. Yeah. It, it's, there's, no, there's no point beating around the bush. I'm, I'm straight to the point is you're stupid. You should be testing. Mm -hmm. You, that could be into your lung or anything. Yeah. Uh, how do I know if it goes into a lung? Well, when obviously my my youngest child, sorry, who's NG fed, she's currently six years old. Uh, my six year old actually passes that tube herself, um, and then obviously I test that. She's been taught from a very young age to pass it herself, and she's kept up with that. Um, but as a parent and everything, you've got to obviously take that responsibility. I understand the girl's age which obviously she's got to look at that from her point of view is she could be doing very bad damage to herself, which mm -hmm. could be a non-return. Exactly. Exactly. And nobody wants that. And no. God, like God forbid it even happens. A parent certainly don't want that because they've already lost one child, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I just don't know what the end point is like. Kirsty said that she doesn't think that it's going to be an end point. Yeah. Um, what do you think, Wallace? Uh, it's, I, to be honest, it's just the way that I'm looking at it, it's just, oh, I just find it, I try and keep it always filtered, but it's yeah. a shit show. <laughs> and and I, I, I just don't, I, I just, from a parental responsibility and everything, and obviously with what I go through day to day, and if my child ended up doing that to themselves, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to either. I'd be going around there and I'd be going like, what are you doing? I'd be like trying my best to get her some sort of psychiatric help because she needs it. She, she obviously needs retraining again. Obviously, I don't know, has she had this from a young age? Or... I don't know. Is it something new? And, and, it, and, it, and this is what's ticking boxes for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she said she's had these, these tubes since birth. Since mm. birth? Yeah. Right, okay. Nice. What was I going to say? For, for obviously, on the other side, for medical supplies and that, um, all you've got to do is make one phone call and you can get unlimited of medical supplies that are needed. Surely so, he doesn't have to show proof. You don't have to. Literally, you can just phone him up and just say, look, I'm short of this. Could you add it to the list? I'll need it urgently. And they'll get it out to you within 24 hours. That's just... He's taken equipment from people who actually need it. Mm, so yes. she, gets, she gets her equipment off Facebook. She goes yeah. lots of feeding groups on Facebook and asks for stuff, or she buys stuff off eBay and Amazon. Yeah. Um, and now there, it's just getting worse and worse and there, worse. There, there is also, there is actually a website as well where you can actually get supply as well that other parents, when you've got uh, too much supply, they pull it onto there and give it to other families. Do you actually um, see her insert the tubes? Yes. Well, the, yeah, I am. She does that. Um, as Carly's just said, yes, Carly, that is the site that I'm on about. Um, and it's just, obviously, when you get to know people and stuff, okay, you can say, right, well, you can borrow this because you know 100%. But when she's on there asking for stuff, that should be a no-no because at the end of the day, you don't even know if that's contaminated either. Yes. And anything that you do with an NG or 
like from my point of view, from an NG, everything has got to be sterile. You've got to make sure the sides and everything are cleaned down. You don't know what these other people ha people's houses are like. Exactly. And especially from a judge point of view as well, because it's going into your small bowel, it's, you've got to be extra sterile with the judges as well. Yep. Yeah. Uh, like I know with NG tubes that I know a lot of people you can say you can just put tap water or bottled water down an NG. Uh, no. Like, but with a judge, you can't just put normal bottled water down there. It's got to be sterile water. All, all of mine is cold boiled water. Yeah. No matter what, that's all I yeah, use. That's the same with me. Cool boiled water, but even like the judges, the more sterile than the NGs, because the NGs going into your stomach, the judges going obviously yeah. into your bowel where things aren't really meant to directly go into there. Mm. So it has got to be a lot more sterile than the NG yeah. as well. Yep. Yeah. Um, and obviously, NGs, yes, they do last up to three months. Like, obviously, I don't know, obviously, on the jet side, but I know in NG is up to three months that they can last. Um, sometimes, obviously, they, they go before that because obviously they start to perish inside the stomach because of the acids yeah. that the stomach has. Paul, is, is it painful when you insert the tubes? So basically, it's getting, well, normally, like back in the day, I would literally put my child on the camera and say, look, she would literally sit there and do it herself. But with passing the tube, Obviously, it's got to go up the nostril and around your sinus and down. Um, and then the only point that it basically hurts is on the gag reflex. Yeah. Because obviously, if you imagine sticking your fingers in your throat and you're gagging. <laughs> that is what they're feeling as obviously a tube's going down. Um, but now, obviously, my daughter, okay, she's six years old. She's learned how to do it. So she swallows. She just keeps swallowing as she's inserting. Um, and then... Obviously, with a tube, it tells you how far down it is. It's got centimetres actually on the side of the tube. Um, with obviously, most people think, well, you, your tummy, like your lower tummy, is where your stomach is. No, it's not. It's higher <laughs> you, up. Yeah. It's, it's higher up. So, yeah. so basically, your stomach is where your rib cage meets in the middle. It's there, dead centre middle, just below that. 